shooting aerial panos was right up near the top of the list of reasons why I bought a drone, Phantom 3, in the first place. But I quickly learned that it wasn't simply a case of taking the photos. Post-processing panos is notoriously difficult. When you shoot a pano with a DJI drone, the app will create a stitched render in JPEG format. But this is really only of use as a preview because it's very low resolution, usually has stitching issues, particularly with large bodies of water, and if it's shot a 360 pano has an awful sky dome added to it. Over the years, I've acquired various bits of software to assist with my panos, including the late lamented Auto Pano Geiger, the open source Hugin, the pricey PT GUI, Affinity Photo, and of course, Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom. None of these apps offered a 100% reliable solution. Pano Volo, released just a couple of months ago, aims to solve many of the problems with traditional Pano stitching apps, and more specifically, with aerial panos. I didn't get sent a key to review it. I bought it with my own money, and I'm definitely not a member of the affiliate scheme. I have been putting it through its paces, and the TLDR is that it isn't yet a flawless stitching solution for drone panos, but it does address some of the core issues with drone panos, such as missing sky domes, and is a good option for photographers looking for a specialist drone pano app. That's the snapshot. Here's the scoop. Pano Volo was released in June 2024 and has gone through some rapid upgrade iterations, including the recent inclusion in version 1.7 of a fill sky feature. It's a specialized app designed specifically to stitch aerial pano shots taken with a drone and can be purchased for a single fee price of 29 US dollars. It combines traditional pano stitching techniques for modeling recognizable features utilizing matching key points in overlapping images with the special metadata that's unique to drones. Whereas an app like PT GUI relies entirely on identifying matching key points, Panavolo leverages the telemetry data added to all drone photographs, including GPS coordinates and the drone's yaw, pitch, and roll data. What this means is that whereas other apps might struggle to successfully blend adjacent tiles, this app has more work with and should, in theory, do a bad job. Panavolo has a built stripped down interface and to create a panorama, you can point it at a directory or do some batch processing. I'll just point it at a directory of drawing panels I took back in 2023. Open the directory and the processing begins. You can see it ticking down here, loading the images, and then the stitching process will begin. And there is the completed render. That took about three minutes to compile which is certainly not the speediest pano render I've ever used. Admittedly, this is a full 360 and it did fill the sky. So that's one step I wouldn't have to indulge myself in. In my testing, I found that it did render correctly aligned drone panos more consistently than Adobe Lightroom Classic, but it did struggle with some panos, specifically ocean panos, and they often required manual attention. If you only ever shoot aerial panos inland, and on days where there's some cloud in the sky, then you're unlikely to run into problems generating correctly stitched panos with Pano Volo. But that is equally true of PT GUI and Adobe Lightroom as well. The fact that nobody has yet created a Pano app that can reliably stitch together images on a 100% reliable basis is a testament to how difficult the task is, but that doesn't mean we should ignore this core issue with Pano apps. So here's the 360 Pano that I just rendered, and I've got a couple of observations to make about this, but to show that, let's go into the 3D sphere mode. 
and if we scroll over to the ocean we can see that it has failed to correctly stitch the horizon here so the the headlands come out here and we've got these kind of steps going down this is an issue i find with pretty much all panorama software uh, i had hoped that our panel over would fix that and stitch this sort of pano together more successfully but actually it's struggling in exactly the same way as all the other apps it's not an acceptable stitch and i'd have to go in and manually fix up these overlaps to make this look right secondly let's have a look at the old sky dome and if we go up here you can see it's not the best job is it it's basically kind of put a big blurry clone up there now i don't think it's a huge issue because most people when they're looking at these 360 panos don't sort of spend a huge amount of time staring up at that particular bit of the sky but still it's actually no more impressive than the sky that something like the dj app would add by default when it renders the JPEG preview of any panorama you shoot. So not overly impressed by that either. I do like this 3D sphere mode. Uh, you get this mode in Affinity Photo as well, if you're interested. As you can see, Panavolo struggled with horizon lines in much the same way that most pano stitching apps do, which was disappointing given the specialized nature of this app. In its defense, I did have a slightly higher strike rate than Lightroom and successfully stitched some panos that Lightroom Classic struggled with. Before we get further into the issues with the app, here's what I did like about it. Firstly, it's reasonably priced at 29 US dollars. Four marks to the developer for not going the cursed subscription funding route. You do only get updates for one year after the time of purchase, but that's pretty standard these days. Secondly, it's simple to use. Just point it at a pano series or a series of pano series, because it does bulk processing, and set it running. Thirdly, the developer is actually trying something new and bringing innovative new features to the table with the your pitch and roll tweaks. Fourth, it's a solid performer. If you are photographing a standard inland scene rather than a coastal scene, when there are plenty of valid overlapping key points, then it will do a good job. Fifth, the 3D mode is a great addition and enables you to view a 360 pano without having to open it in special software or upload it to Google Photos or Facebook. That's the good stuff. Here's what I didn't like. Firstly, the review mode is so poorly designed that it's effectively useless. The large indicator lines and arrows often completely obscure the images you're trying to line up, which is frustrating. The controls for the your pitch and roll are very small sliders, and it's difficult to land on the right setting because they're not sensitive enough, and you have to spend a while gently teasing the slider back and forth in order to find the right spot. Secondly, you're also left to your own devices in terms of working out which of the four possible candidates you need to tweak to fix any stitching errors. It does say this in the documentation, but some sort of adjacent numbering system would greatly assist. Here's how that all looks in reality. In order to fix up the stitching issues that you get in a pano like this. You need to go into review mode. So I'm just going to go up to that now. You can press Command R or just go in via the menu. And here is the review mode. On the right hand side, we can see all the images that make up this 26 shot pano. We can see the sky dome here, which hasn't been filled in because we're tweaking the pano itself and I can just use the mouse to scroll in on the affected area and you can see if we go right in here that we've got this kind of ghosting where the, the peninsula is sitting above where it should be in this shot and so we need to tweak that and there's a bit of hit and miss trying to work out which of these 
photos that you need to move where. And at the top here, you can see we've got these different controls for your pitch and roll. So we can alter the kind of the attitude of the image and kind of alter it on a 3D plane effectively. So I can roll this image down 26 it's saying there's a lot of features it's matched up there which is all these little red dots but it looks like it's slightly too high let's see if moving that down no that's definitely not it so let's reset that so we've kind of inched things slightly closer but i have to say i'm not blown away by the tools that the developers created to rectify any stitching errors. These on-screen controls tend to block exactly what you're trying to move. I find them really distracting. Uh, I can't help thinking that it could have come up with something slightly better. Quite often, I've done a few of these test shots now just to check the stitching issues. These purple bars sort of sit right on top of the, uh, the bits you're trying to fix and it makes it really difficult to line things up. So the best case scenario on any stitch is that the app gets it right in the first place because it dicking about with the sliders in review mode is like some weird kind of torture. And after testing it extensively, I gave up on it completely. Third on my list of dislikes is that it's not a very fast app and was taken around three minutes to process 26 shot panos. By way of comparison, I can do the same image in Lightroom Classic in about a third of that time. There's a lot to like about Pano Volo, and I have no regrets about spending my own money purchasing it. It has flaws, particularly that clunky review mode, but the developer is rolling out regular updates, and I have no doubt that over time, it will mature into a useful specialist app. It will successfully stitch most of the panos you throw at it, but like all pano apps, it struggles with the horizon line on the ocean and areas of blank sky where there aren't enough viable key points to match up the overlapping images. The review mode is a mess. It was being charitable that I'd say it was a good start, I believe the developer needs to go back to the drawing board and think about the functionality and the on-screen design because at the moment these actually impede the whole manual alignment process. All things considered, I think this is a welcome addition to the app toolkit of any drone owner that regularly takes panos, particularly large 21 or 26 shot sequences. If you recently ditched Adobe to move away from subscription apps, and need a pano app in your life, then it comes recommended. I strongly believe we need to support developers like this who are one, trying something new, and two, charging a reasonable subscription free fee for their app. And that will do us for this first look and review of the Panavolo drone pano app. What do you use for your drone panos? Does it struggle with stitching horizon lines and big skies? Let me know in the comment section below. If you got value from this content, then please hit the old like button and consider subscribing for more photo, video, and drone-related content from yours truly. Till the next time, guys. Sato.